Hey, Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick, and I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In today's episode, we're talking all about the summertime sky, all the cool sights that you can see up there as you head outside and look up this season, whether that's from pristine dark skies or even from brighter skies like we have here in Chicago. If you head outside about an hour after sunset in June, you're going to be seeing the sky basically split into two halves. On the western half of the sky, you'll see the spring constellations, including stars like Arcturus, Regulus, and Spica, which we talked quite a bit about in the last video for the spring sky. These stars will be hanging around for a good bit of the summer, but they're definitely on their way out. Rising in the east, though, and eventually coming to dominate the sky later in the night and later in the season, are the true summertime stars. You can keep track of these throughout the summer and even the fall and see how the sky changes. A great place to start as you view the sky in the summer is the biggest, brightest pattern up there, the Summer Triangle. You'll find it well up in the east as the sky gets dark in June, and straight up overhead by nightfall in August. The brightest of these three stars, Vega, is the fourth brightest star in the nighttime sky, and it's the third brightest that's visible from mid-northern latitudes. The name Vega comes from Arabic. It means eagle or vulture. It's part of the constellation Lyra the Harp, or Lyre, and indeed it's often shown as an eagle holding a harp. Deneb is the brightest star in the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. It marks the tail of the swan, and you can imagine looking up at a swan in flight, with Deneb as the tail, two wings outstretched, and then a long neck leading to the head of the swan. And the third star in the Summer Triangle is Altair, and it marks the eagle, Aquila. This bright pattern in the sky will be visible in the evening sky all the way actually until about December, but it's at its highest and most obvious in the summer months. At the beginning of summer, look in the south-southeast of the evening sky, and you'll be able to see a bright reddish orangish star here called Antares. You can find the bright star Antares even from light-polluted skies, and it marks the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. In a darker sky, you can trace out the claws and the long tail with a stinger at the end, though you'll have to wait until a little bit later in the night before it's fully visible. The star Antares is a red supergiant star, and its name actually means the rival of Mars. Now, Mars is visible in the western evening sky as the summer starts, so take a chance to compare the two. Rising behind Scorpius is a bright asterism or pattern of stars that resembles a teapot. This is part of the constellation of Sagittarius the Archer. It's a huge constellation, but the brightest and most obvious section is the teapot, and that can be seen even from light-polluted skies. These two zodiac constellations of Sagittarius and Scorpius frame a very bright part of the Milky Way. From dark skies on a moonless night, it's a majestic view. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere is the best time for viewing the Milky Way, because its brightest sections are highest in the sky at this time. The Milky Way, this band of hazy light across the sky, is our view of our galaxy from the inside. Now, every star we see with the naked eye is part of the Milky Way, but we see most of the stars along that band of light, the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. The summertime Milky Way holds some incredible treasures to view with binoculars or a telescope, areas that appear as brighter smudges to the naked eye start to show up as clusters and nebulae with some magnification. Some newer smartphones have night sky or even astrophotography modes, and that allows you to capture some fun point-and-shoot images from dark skies. We've already mentioned Mars, which is hanging out in the western sky after sunset, and it's got some interesting things to look for near it as well. On the nights of June 16th, 17th, and 18th, Mars will appear quite close to the star Regulus, which marks the heart of Leo the Lion. This will be quite an eye-catching pairing, with Mars just slightly dimmer than the star. There's also another planet to see in the western sky after sunset in the early summer, Mercury, which never appears very far from the sun in the sky. It's going to be most easily visible during the last week of June and the first week of July. You want to look for it low in the west, to the lower right of Mars, and the brightest star in Leo the Lion, Regulus. The easiest night to spot it? will be likely June 26th, when the crescent moon will appear to the right of it. Find the moon, and go about five moon widths to the left, and you'll hopefully be able to spot elusive Mercury. 
An even easier planet-moon pairing occurs three nights later on June 29th, when the moon will appear quite close to the planet Mars in the sky. Now, depending on how far west and south you are in the U.S., the two will appear quite a bit closer together. And from Ecuador and Peru, the moon will actually cover over, or occult, the red planet. Every August, the Earth passes through the orbit of a comet called Swift-Tuttle, and this creates the amazing Perseid meteor shower. Now, the comet is nowhere to be seen easily right now, as it last passed near the Sun in 1992 but its orbit is filled with bits of dust and rubble. These strike the Earth's atmosphere at about 40 miles per second, creating the short bursts of light known as meteors or shooting stars. On the night of August 12th into the morning of the 13th, you can expect to see as many as 100 meteors per hour in a perfectly dark sky. But this year, the bright gibbous moon will cut down on the number visible. You don't have to only look that night, though. You can see Perseids in lower numbers anywhere from about mid-July to the end of August. You know a meteor is a Perseid if you trace its path back and it points toward the constellation of Perseus, which will be rising in the northeast a couple hours after sunset. Meteor showers are named for the constellation they appear to radiate from, so the Perseids get their name from the radiant constellation of Perseus, the hero. Meteor showers require no binoculars or telescope, just some patience and as dark a sky and as wide a view as possible. Even from cities, you can expect to see some of the brighter meteors, though much fewer than you'll see in a dark sky. So these summer nights certainly have plenty to show, even if they are the shortest nights of the year. So get out there this season, look up, and see what you can find. That's what we have for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Clear skies, and we'll see you next time.